what is going on youtube savage here today we're going to be diving into probably one of my most requested videos ever and this is specifically talking about switching from console to pc gaming now with the success of warzone and apex and other games like it of course a lot of gamers are starting to come over to the pc world which we love to see because people have realized the importance of frames and that consoles can't really compete with it right now of course with ps5 and everything coming out the frames are a lot better than what they were in the ps4 and previous consoles however when you're comparing pc to console in frames per second there's no comparison but if you haven't already make sure you subscribe to the channel join the wolf pack today also leave a like on the video let's get this video to 2000 likes and as always you guys are gamers and you guys play warzone join our discord community and utilize the lfg pages to find teammates to go ahead and play with now this video has a lot of information and yes i will be putting timestamps in the description below to make it easier for you guys to navigate however you guys do need all the pieces to the puzzle in order to be very successful at a smooth transition from controller to mouse and keyboard we're going to start off pretty basic with the first tip and then we're going to dive into the more advanced tips and really the information you guys really want to know but without further ado let's go ahead and dive into the video so now let's go over the basics now this is a mouse for my streaming pc so we're not going to cover that but let's cover gamer position now if you guys are console players y'all know the try hard gaming position when you guys are sitting there you're laid back you're just relaxed you're gaming and then all of a sudden you know someone starts talking shit, and all of a sudden you got to go try hard so what do you do you sit up you get positioned you're like all right now i'm about to go down so just like with console gaming position is extremely crucial when it comes to mouse and keyboard now there's many variants a person can do me for one i'm gonna show you guys my layout um actually i'll show you guys the basic layout first so normally everyone assumes your keyboard needs to be straight and your mouse needs to be next to it which is definitely a given now definitely get a massive mouse pad which gives you room to navigate and flick on targets right also wireless mice they are the wave now as well the latency is virtually none they're just as good as when they're plugged in definitely recommend that so what do you do savage when i first get mouse and keyboard do i just lay it next to each other and just pray for the best no no you do not so me for one i love canting my keyboard this makes it easy for my fingers to navigate and the reason being is the almighty pinky if you guys have tried playing mouse and keyboard and you're trying to hit that control button or that shift button and you just can't figure it out because you got to cant your wrist and your your pinky has trouble flexing it's very easy if your keyboard's canted because of how your fingers lay out naturally however if you turn it straight and you lay your fingers on it naturally now look at where it's at your pinky's basically between caps lock and shift and again just to show you guys you can't your keyboard a little bit you rest your middle finger on w all of a sudden your pinky moves down that half an inch from caps and shift down to shift and control which makes it super easy to go ahead and utilize control now when it comes to how your arms are positioned on the desk um again there's many variants you need to find out what's good for you i used to play with my keyboard towards the edge of the desk and my mouse towards the edge of the desk i was trying to utilize my whole arm to be more precise and we'll get into the precision of whole arm movement later in the video as well um but recently i realized you know it's pretty exhausting you know your arms are hanging off you're sitting there you're, you're moving and you get fatigued a lot faster so what i did realize was if i move my keyboard you know up a little bit and then i rest my arms on the desk and of course can't the keyboard everything just naturally flows my hands just fall on it that takes no work to get there and then i'm free to do whatever i want granted with your forearm resting on the desk the option of being an arm gamer kind of goes out the window but that's why i've raised my dpi and we'll get into that later and become more of a wrist gamer i mean from time to time if i'm flicking i'll move my entire arm but i try to minimize my arm movement because of my long extended periods of gaming because i don't want to get fatigued as fast all right so let's go ahead and talk about key binds and the importance of key binds and kind of where you want your hands to be placed on the keyboard now i always love to rest my middle finger on the w key just because it's very easy for my index to navigate to f g c e and r depending on the game that you're playing depends on what those key binds are but for me I'm a warzone player battle royale player and usually my key binds are pretty consistent in first person shooters so of course when it comes to any movement you're going to be utilizing WASD that's pretty much a given however I utilize my Q for my tactical E for my lethal R for my reload F for my action like opening up doors picking up loot things like that C for crouching X for prone I don't utilize Z anymore because it just found it was really hard for the way my hands were positioned to be able to navigate to Z, especially because in most first person shootings, you want to remain mobile. You never want to stop moving, which would mean you'd have to remove your finger from the W key and move down to the Z key. No matter how you played it out, it was just very uncomfortable for me to hit the Z key without removing my fingers from my And of course, my shift is my sprint and control. Well, you can kind of have control, whatever you want it to be. Um, but that's basically my layout to my binds now, but I do recommend you guys get a mouse that allows you to keybind some buttons on the mouse, which makes your movement on keyboard a lot easier. 
keyboards are very overwhelming there are a bunch of keys but as far as the shooter is concerned you're really not utilizing much of anything you're basically utilizing this little part right here and the rest of it's not really important of course i use m for my map tab for my inventory um a lot of people use i for the inventory as well you can customize your buttons over here but i like to keep it simple for me now i don't utilize any of my number keys at all i utilize my scroll wheel in order to change my weapon because one two three four and five is usually your weapons now it's going to vary from person to person because of the different technology that they're using different keyboards different mice things like that now a lot of people are like well savage how do you lean peak how do you mount how do you do this and that from rainbow six siege from this and again we'll get into that when we're talking about the mouse now i know i'm spitting a lot of information but there's a lot to cover in a short amount of time and i really don't want this video to go to 30 minutes we'll see what it ends up doing but secondly now we're going to dive into the question that everyone has savage how do i aim the mouse is so hard to use i don't get it how are people precise how do i become shroud how do i become symphony how do i become all of these people how do i shoot like you practice honestly guys and i know this sucks to hear you gotta practice man you have to practice in order to be better now the benefit of being a pc gamer is the fact that there are so many tools out there that we can utilize to practice and become a better player i for one love to utilize aim labs it's one of my favorite i've tried many others the other ones are good as well so you, of course preference for each person but i love aim labs it keeps track of your score it even has a little competitive section so you can kind of compete against your own score get better you can see where you're getting better it shows you charts as far as oh your accuracy is increasing your aims increasing uh your snap is increasing and things like that and there's different tools to utilize and we're going to dive into that here very shortly all right so here we are in the program that i prefer now like i said there are a lot of programs out there and there's not one that's better than the other it's just what you're used to and what you're familiar with as far as the layout's concerned and I've been using Aim Labs for a while. And again, this is also not sponsored. It's just what I prefer. There's other ones out there like Kovat. That's extremely well. Um, and other ones out there. This one is free on Steam. And that's kind of the selling point for me is that the fact that it was free. Um, but as you can see here, laying in front of you are a lot of different courses you can do. But this is just the basics, honestly. This is just the start. There are so many more that you can utilize. So if you go over to tasks, you can see that if you want to improve your flicking, you can do that. Tracking is, is extremely important. And what tracking means is a target running side to side. You're able to track him efficiently using your mouse cursor, of course. Um, speed, this helps you develop your reaction time and become a better player. Faster reaction means faster snaps, faster response time. And of course, you will be able to outshoot your enemies. Now, precision. I mean, it's in the name. The reason why I'm a top tier sniper is because of precision. I have done these courses many, 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 many times. And with the precision course, you're focusing on hitting the center of the target and also snapping to the next target from side to side. All right, so cognition. Now, if you watch my How to Improve at Warzone series on YouTube, y'all might wonder, Savage, how come your decision-making time is so good? Well, despite my previous training and my other careers, this has helped me drastically. Um, As you can see right here, um, decision shot. You decide what to shoot at. It puts up two targets. You're supposed to shoot the blue one, not the red one, and you will fail a lot at this. But again, don't let it deter you keep practicing and get better with your decision making because that not only goes from picking targets that you want to shoot but it'll help you decide what decisions you want to make in a game no matter what game it is this course is more than just improving your aim it does improve your mindset as well all right so here we are with the perception tab perception is exactly what it says it, it helps train your eyes um to react the moment you see it and that is crucial a lot of people you know they'll see a target and it may take them a few seconds to react they end up flicking and overshooting the target this here is extremely simple. You just sit here, leave your crosshair where it's at. The moment the target pops up, you pull the trigger and then you slowly get better at that. I'm a little biased with perception. And again, I believe perception is extremely important. My perception skills are actually through the roof. Um, it's 82 out of 100. It's one of my top things. I do believe that it's very important again with just multiple things, not even just shooting. Let's go ahead and pull up my Logitech software. Of course, I use a Logitech G502 and it is one of my favorite mice out there i highly recommend you guys get it i have the light speed one which means it's wireless it does have the option to be plugged in and charge while you're gaming so it's perfect i'm um, not to mention dude the battery life on these things uh is better than what they tell you on the instructions i swear they are i didn't charge my keyboard for at least a month and they were like you can get about a week out of it same thing with the mice man i didn't charge it for about a month and they were telling me i might get about you know a week two weeks at max these things last forever and I gave me a lot. So let's go ahead and dive into the sensitivity and DPI and things like that. So DPI is exactly what it says right here is the speed of your mouse on screen. And basically the higher DPI, I want you guys to notice the movement of a mouse, the higher the DPI, let's bring it to 25,600. 
the crazier the mouse is. Holy shit, I can't even center the mouse. And I want you guys to see how little my hand moves. Like, honestly, pay attention to clear one side of the screen to the other, right? That's exactly what DPI does. Now, I never recommend anybody going above around, I'd say 2,000 at the absolute max. Can I even click it? Oh God, we got it. All right. Now, 2,000 makes you a good risk gamer. Of course, I used to play, honestly, I used to play on 3,500. That was a little crazy, but I mean, again, for a risk gamer, it's not that bad. But the higher DPI, the more hard it's gonna be for you to be a precise shot. And what I mean by that is, if you're sitting there and you flick on a target, and then all of a sudden, he starts sidestepping and you're trying to be precise, every fraction of an inch makes your mouse go side to side. Let's imagine there's an enemy right here, and I'm trying to track him side to side. It's very hard to track him because the minimal movement slings my, my crosshair from side to side. So again, I always recommend lowering your, your DPI to around, I'd say 1250 is a good one. Let's go ahead and remove this. I don't want this here at all. All right, we went ahead and removed that. So 1250 is not a bad one. I like 1250. It's a good minimum position. So now we're again, we're in a position to where if a target's in front of us and we're trying to track him side to side, it's going to be a lot easier for us to be precise with our shots because our mouse isn't going everywhere. We have a little bit more control. Personally, again, I actually game on 800 DPI because I feel like that's a lot better for me. I also tried out 400 DPI, which makes it a lot stricter. Now, as you notice, in order to go from the center of the screen to the right, I actually have to move a good, a good decent bit. And what that does is if a target starts sidestepping, I can track him efficiently and smoothly as opposed to being right here. I mean, I can't even be smooth against the line. I mean, it's it's extremely difficult. So again, 400 is a good one, but I feel like 400 was a little too much for my arm. I wanted a nice little position. So I, I definitely recommend 800 to 1200 DPI is a good wrist movement with a little bit of arm action if you're having a flick or do a 360 and things like that. And it's less exhausting for you. What I always recommend for new players is find a DPI that you feel like you wanna try out go into your favorite streamers chat, type in exclamation sensitivity if they're mouse and keyboard streamer, and it should tell you their sensitivity and DPI settings. And then you can kind of use that as a starting ground. You don't wanna stick with that. You need to try it out for about, I'd say, honestly, you know, two to three days minimum, a week at best. I always recommend a week uh, of gaming. That way you guys, you know, can go to bed, you can get back on it, see how well your muscle memory reacts and then keep the process going. And then after that period of time, you guys can be like, okay, look, this isn't for me, maybe I should try something else. And then of course you can raise your DPI up and find that setting that you like. So again, the benefits of low DPI is better precision because your crosshair's not going everywhere. And same with the tracking, it's easier to track a target from side to side because your crosshair's not going anywhere. It's slower, it's more controlled. Whether it's better or not, again, is up to the person, is up to the player. Every pro plays on something different, but most pro players do play on lower DPI. Now high DPI does have some massive benefits. Movement speed will be way better, especially in Modern Warfare. Again, I'm be relating that game a lot because I play it a lot. But movement in Modern Warfare, you guys know you need to be quick with your movement. All the best players always have the better movement and the better shots. Same thing with flicking. It also leads to have better flicking because you're able to turn on the target without using your entire arm. And it takes less time and less energy for you to flick on the target because you're not moving your entire arm because you're only moving your wrist. So again, it's easier to do this than it is to do this. And it takes less time as well. So there are benefits to higher DPI sensitivity. That's why I like sitting somewhere in the middle. Again, most players play from 400 all the way up to about 3,500. Anything above 3,500, I think is a little ridiculous. So sit somewhere in the middle. Now, one downfall of a lower DPI is if you're in a close range combat, and this guy is cracked out of his mind. He's going from side to side and he's spinning circles around you. It's gonna be harder for you to sit there and track the enemy because you're gonna be having to move your arm and it's gonna be a little bit more difficult to track the enemy because he's moving so fast. However, you can't base that one instance on the totality of the situation on the entire package because again, on the flip side, the con to high DPI is the fact that it's less precise because again, the little tiniest fraction of movement can send your crosshair flailing out in the wrong direction overshooting the target or not being able to track him efficiently. Now let's go ahead and talk about equipment and we're gonna go ahead and pull up my equipment. I love these two things. I recently upgraded probably two months ago and I was kind of hesitant to get this keyboard um, because it doesn't have the number pad on the edge of it. And you know, after doing a lot of research and watching a lot of YouTubers that put out a lot of good content, I realized that not having the number pad there is amazing and mostly because no matter how big your mouse pad is, your wingspan is only so far comfortably, right? Now, what I mean by that is the fact that when I had my other keyboard, it was about this long and it only left me a little bit of mouse pad. Now you guys might be like, Savage, just move the mouse pad over because there's so much extra right here. Well, theoretically, you're right. The problem is my wingspan, my comfortable gamer position, just like we talked about in the beginning. 
So if I was to sit here and move my mouse over, I would be at a lot wider wingspan. My arm, if you guys look at it, is way out here. You know how comfortable it is gaming in a position that's way out here? Not comfortable at all. I would rather be in a good relaxed state and be able to move from side to side. So upgrading my keyboard to this keyboard without the number pad was drastic because I can now flick from left to right and not have to worry about hitting the numbers, which I did a lot, man, a lot. You guys ever seen my streams back in the day? You know, I would always bitch about like, damn it, I ran out of mouse pad, damn it, I hit my keyboard. And it's a drastic thing, honestly. So the TKL series, I was very skeptical about because I was so used to typing the numbers, but how often does a person really utilize that? It took me a few weeks to get used to typing up here. And am I a fan of typing on these? No, I'm not, I do miss that. But when it comes to gaming, you're not gonna be typing numbers. You really aren't. So as far as the keyboard's concerned with gaming, definitely get the TKL series. You don't have to get Logitech. You don't have to get things like that. Just make sure you remove the number pad and give yourself a lot more room to move comfortably. Now, going more in depth with the equipment. Again, I love Logitech keyboards. I've been using Logitech keyboards for four years. This is not a sponsored video, by the way. I just prefer that. And I've been through a lot of keyboards. I've been through a lot. I'm not gonna name any companies out there, but I have wasted a lot of money on some bad technology out there from high name brands. So I always wanna give you guys the best advice. And again, this is not sponsored. I'm not getting paid to advertise Logitech. It's just honestly what I prefer to use. Now, as far as the mouse, let's dive into the importance of the mouse and why I love the Logitech G502. So let's go ahead and go to assignments and this will show all of the buttons and all of the binds that I really love to utilize. Now, this is not my gaming PC. So unfortunately my binds are not the same as they would be um, normally. This right here, the scroll wheel, you actually have the ability to tilt the scroll wheel from one side to the other. So right here, when you guys have this, you can actually click it from left to right. And what that allows you to do is just bind that key to whatever you want to use. For instance, if you're a Rainbow Six Siege player and you like to lean peek a lot because you know a lot of the goaded Rainbow Six Siege players lean peek their nuts off, um, you're going to want to have some kind of key that's easy to hit. And being able to keep your finger on the trigger and use your middle finger to hit it one way or another is extremely crucial, especially when you're in mid combat and you need to pop those lean peaks. The same thing goes with any game, honestly. You can utilize it for grenade throwing, you can utilize it for slide canceling, you can utilize that button for whatever you want. So I love the fact that the G502 gives you that ability. Now, all of these key binds are the same on the light speed and the wired version, which is also a lot cheaper. So if you guys like the G502 and the layout, there are four different variants. I believe the cheapest one is $69.99, if I'm not mistaken. And this one was $259 or $249. So there's a huge variety of price options for you guys out there. Now, one thing that I love, that I absolutely love is this thumb rest right here, is this thumb rest. And as you guys can see, I, I have to have it. There's nothing that drives me crazy more than having to rub my thumb against the mouse pad. It tickles, it's irritating, and it's just a pain in the ass. And also it's kind of frustrating to have to utilize that muscle, utilize your thumb in order to, to have to grip the mouse, which leads me to the point of you don't wanna over grip your mouse because it makes it harder for you to be precise. If you're gripping, your hand's shaking a little bit, it's gonna be harder for you to be able to laser the target. Now let's look at the side view. Uh, these two buttons are extremely crucial right here. I really don't utilize this button at all. You can change it from DPI shift. You can utilize this to change your DPI on the fly. However, I will tell you guys that I only have one DPI setting. And the reason for that is because, well, I just don't like accidentally hitting that button mid fight and jumping to 3,600 DPI. And that's happened before, right? You don't want to accidentally hit that button um, and switch it in the mid fight. And I did that for years before I actually took the time to change my settings. Um, but these two buttons right here are crucial. I utilize this one in the back for pinging because my finger is already resting right there. If I need to ping an enemy in Warzone, it's very easy, it's very fast. All I have to do is click this button with my thumb and guess what? My fingers are still on the ADS and the trigger. So it allows you to keep your fingers ready for any kind of combat while being able to ping enemies and call it out to your teammate. All right, so as far as practicing in software, you also wanna practice in the game that you're trying to master, whether it's Valorant, who also has a very good um, training software built into that game, and Modern Warfare as well, where you can load up against bots is exactly what I'm doing. I'm not slaying an actual lobby. I'm loading up against bots because I don't wanna get shot at that much. I don't wanna die. My goal is to practice my aim and keep my crosshair placement good. So speaking of crosshair placement, when you're navigating through any video game, you don't want to stare at the ground. For some reason, gamers have a habit, and trust me, I fell into this too. Gamers have a habit to look at the ground. I don't know why. Maybe it's because of looting. Maybe it's because of whatever. But if you ever watch most streamers, 
when they're running and not doing anything, their crosshair will not be on the horizon. It will be on the actual floor, which is a very bad tactic because then if the enemy pops out, you're going to have to aim up and over to be able to hit the target. If these guys would actually practice keeping their crosshairs on the horizon, all they would have to do is move the crosshair over to the left instead of up and down and things like that. And guys, I'm a firm believer in practice makes perfect. Practice is necessary in everything that you want to get good at in life. You guys just need to sit down, ask yourself, do I really want to take the time to do this or are there better things that I can do with my time? For me, for one, I feel like 30 minutes a day until you get confident, until you get to a place you want to be is good. And then once you hit that spot that you feel you're like you're good at, then you break your training down instead of seven days a week to three days a week, to two days a week, maybe an hour once a week. Who knows? Just kind of base it off that. But your first week, I want you guys to get into it. I want you guys to grind 30 minutes a day, whether it's an aim software, whether it's uh, the game you're playing. Now, if you're on controller and you're watching this video, this applies to you too. You won't have the aim software to your advantage. However, you can load up against bots in most games and practice. I'm literally just run around against bots and practice my movement, practice avoiding getting shot, practice my flick shots and kind of just improve off that. Not to mention before I play Warzone, I try my best, not always, because sometimes I'm running late for the stream. But if I have the time, I try to practice 30 minutes before I play Warzone. So I'm already ready. I'm already warmed up. I'm ready to go. All the dust is shaken off and we're ready to slay out. Now, when I do that, when I do come in here and train, I have a playlist that's preset. I don't know if this account has that playlist. It does. All right. So I have my daily training where I select the courses that I think I really need to work on. And then I focus on those courses and I, you know, throw them in this huge playlist and I shoot every single one of these courses until I'm done. Now. You guys need to take a break, right? You don't want to sit here behind a monitor for an hour just shooting, 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 because that will fatigue you fast. In one 60 second course, you will shoot your gun more times than you will in an entire day of gaming. So you guys just give yourself a break, play two or three courses, go do something else, come back, play two or three courses, go and do something else. But like I said, days that I would really train hardcore, I would go in, bro. I would go in, as you can see here. And same thing with flicking. Uh, now, flicking is one thing that I've struggled with at one point. I've gotten way better because of this app. Let's just jump into grid shot this is one of my favorites let's go ahead and jump in here now because i'm talking i'm not going to be as efficient so do not judge right this is actually going to be live i'm not pre-recording the gameplay and talking over it we're actually going to be doing this live right here right now all right so all right so basically when you're training you need to breathe you need to breathe always and it's something that i've learned i've been streaming for three years and one thing i always struggle with was breathing techniques breathing techniques is not only good for aiming but it's good for your life you need to breathe whenever you're in a stressful situation and unfortunately for us as gamers we're in stressful situations a lot so again here we are just breathe and take your time and try your best to hit every target and if you miss don't worry don't panic slow it down and get back to it The goal isn't to hit them as fast as you can. The goal is to hit them without missing a single shot. And then the more times you do this, the more accurate you will become. And then you can speed it up slowly and get faster and more efficient. Now, again, I really haven't played this in a few weeks. I'm going to be honest. So my time is going to be a little bit slow and my score will be slower than normal. I'm sure. Not to mention I'm talking while doing this instead of breathing always breathe not only when you're training guys but when you're gaming in general you just need to breathe all right so let's talk about what's going on here all right so after you finish your course it gives you your score right so it says savage your accuracy is actually 91 percent, which is pretty good for not having played in a, in a few a few weeks right um your score overall is 45 percent. total kills 52 percent. targets hit 53 percent, or, or targets that pop up 53 percent, which means if I want to hit every target that's available in this training software that's available on this course, I need to double my my speed. I need to get faster, faster, faster. Same thing with time to kill. As you can see, score, kill total, targets, time to kill, and kills per second is all relatively the same because, again, that's going to come with just practicing getting better and getting more targets killed faster. When I first started this game, I was like, got to hit it fast. I want to be like a pro gamer. I want to be fast. I want to be good. I want to be a god at Valorant, god at Warzone. So I'm just flinging bullets everywhere and i just wasn't improving i was in the same stagnant state for probably two weeks and like i said before i gave up i stopped i stopped using the software because i was like man this doesn't work um and then aim labs i believe aim labs had tweeted out another streamer who was actually giving a lesson he was like look the main purpose of this is not to shoot fast the main purpose is to hit the targets 
take your time and slowly evolve because this is not a sprint to become good at mouse and keyboard is a very very long race it does take time it may take one person a month it may take one person three months it may take a person a whole year it just depends on how much you're practicing how much you're gaming and how patient you are with the improvements but again guys to sum it all up mouse and keyboard is an amazing amazing tool that i love to utilize now there's a huge misconception of controller versus mouse and keyboard controller is better mouse and keyboard is better but it all just depends on the player if a controller player picks up the mouse and keyboard for the first time half of them will be pretty good at it half of them will be very terrible at it it just depends on the person technically one is not better than the other however i do firmly believe that mouse and keyboard does give you a higher ceiling of skill level that you can obtain and achieve but hopefully i answered all of your questions and i'm trying to squeeze in as much information as i can and make this video as short as possible i don't know how long this video is going to end up hopefully not an hour long but if you guys have any questions please let me know in the comment section below i'm serious i will read every comment i do every video i put out and i will make a second follow-up video to answer the questions you guys ask but i hope you have a good day and i really hope you guys make that transition from controller to mouse and keyboard just so you guys can experience it and decide for yourself which one do you like better mouse and keyboard or controller but guys until next time y'all have a good one and keep on improving thank you for watching i really hope this information helped you out if it did make sure you check out one of these two videos that also give you tips on how to get better at mouse and keyboard and as always subscribe by clicking the button over here you have a good one and keep on improving